All right, this lesson is on projectile motion uh, launches at an angle. And it's how to complete, it's the next steps in your kind of uh, ball toss lab that we did on Monday. So quick review on Monday. Now the story so far, said objects only accelerate with forces. So in the example of motion, when we break things up, for example, we threw things, oftentimes we try to throw them high, but we accidentally threw them a little bit over, and we got this kind of mostly high flight. But we still covered some displacement in the x-direction. That's because it had a little bit of velocity in the x and a lot of velocity upward in the y direction. Well it turns out gravity only affects this up and down motion. So up and down motion is accelerating at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But in the side-to-side -side motion, velocity is constant. So if you want to solve for anything in the side-to-side -side direction, change in distance in the x direction over change in time. It's very simple. But if you want to solve things in the up and down direction, well, we have lots of formulas. Velocity equals velocity initial plus acceleration times time. This is all velocity in the y direction. So we're looking at the up and down component. Velocity final squared times velocity initial squared equals 2 times acceleration times change in displacement in the up and down direction or y. And final displacement equals initial position, which is always zero for this class plus velocity initial times time, plus one-half acceleration times time squared. This would be your final distance. So that's just a review. Now what we're going to do is, if we know the velocity in the y direction, and we know the initial velocity in the x direction, now we want to solve for, well, what's your actual resultant velocity? and at what angle was it launched at. So, on your calculation side of your page, this is step one. This over here was, this is on the calculation side of your page. This is step three. And you're going to do this on another piece of paper for each one. So finally, on a new page, so here's your next assignment after these notes. Do Wednesday. For all four throws, solve for the actual resultant velocity and launch angle. That means angle. And here's how. So you're going to take all of your, you solve for, so for example, for max height. Oh boy, a little bit of lag. We solve for velocity initial
We solved for velocity initial two times. And we also found velocity in the x two times. And now you're going to find your resultant velocity two times. Show all your calculations. The same thing for your max distance, though. We still solve for velocity initial twice, velocity in the x twice, and now we're going to solve for the resultant velocity. Here we go. So if we know our upward velocity equals 30 meters per second, and we'll call our velocity in the x 10 meters per second, first thing you want to do is find out what is this thing right here. And this is called resultant velocity. We do this by turning it into a triangle. So we did this in the very beginning of the year. Starting to look familiar? It's the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C squared is VR squared. This is the resultant or the combination of the upward and sideways. B squared can be whatever you want. Do the math. This becomes 100 plus 900 equals VR squared. 1000 equals VR squared. Final step, don't skip it. Square root both sides. I don't know what the square root of 1000 is. Is it 100? And this equals 31.6 meters per second. So now that I know that this equals 31.6 meters per second, I also want to know what angle did I throw it at? And this gets this little sign. So the first part is do the Pythagorean theorem and solve for the hypotenuse. Second part is do a little uh, geometry. We'll redraw our triangle with our nice color coding. This is 31.6, 30, and 10. All right, so quick review. This is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side. It's opposite of the angle we want to find. The angle's here, the opposite's over here. This is the adjacent side. Adjacent means touching. It's touching, the, it's part of the angle that we want to solve for. And we'll use the following trig functions. Sokotoa. Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. We can pick any one because we know all three sides. I'm going to pick one with opposite and adjacent because I like those numbers. So it's going to be tangent theta equals opposite 30 over adjacent 10. Okay, now you need to get out your phones and here's what we need to do. I just want this and I need to move the tangent over here, a little algebra. So what I want is tangent equals, theta equals 
and then we have this inverse tangent button. It's oftentimes your second function. So to solve for this, take a look at my calculator. Yours probably won't look like this, but you just need to figure this out. Ask for help in your group. I want this button right here, inverse tangent. So I'm going to press 30 divided by 10 equals inverse tangent. And that's my answer, 71 degrees. For some of you, you'll have to push inverse tangent and then in parentheses, 30 over 10, you're just going to have to figure this out. So figure out your buttons until 30 over 10 gives you 71.5 degrees. And that's your other answer. So you need to figure this step out. Figure this step out. How to get to inverse tangent and how your calculator works so that your buttons equal 71.5 degrees. All right, so finish up your lab uh, on a separate piece of paper due tomorrow. The whole thing will be due tomorrow.